Grab your paddles and get ready to play. We're going to show you a fun sport that's great for not only grandpa, but also grandson. Hi, I'm Darren Kinder. Today on At Your Leisure, Jill and I are going to show you how to play pickleball. And it's great fun and everybody can get in and enjoy it. Reese Stein is going to be there showing us the ins and outs of this great game. From there, we're going to follow Chad Booth in the footsteps of our ancestors as he travels on an epic journey. From there, Don Dunwell travels to Las Vegas to a land summit meeting that could open up trails in the near future. At Your Leisure is next. Well, welcome to At Your Leisure. I'm Darren Kinder. And I'm Jill Kinder. We're here in Ogden at the Ogden Pickleball Association with Reese Stein and Neil City. Yeah, and these guys are geniuses at pickleball, right? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, they're going to show us how to play some pickleball, and we're going to see what, what this game's all about because it looks like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, you bet. Especially for people of a certain age <laughs> and ex-tennis players uh, playing on a smaller court. And it's a lot of fun and it's addictive, right? Yes, it is, absolutely. Probably a little easier on the knees than the old tennis game, huh? A lot easier. <laughs> okay, well, that's great. Well, let's, uh, let's see what this game's all about. We've seen a lot of people playing really well, and so let's see if we can learn how to do it. Pickleball is a combination, I like to call it a combination of tennis and ping pong. Pickleball is a little bit like tennis, but the difference is, is you play with a paddle rather than a racket, and you use a whipple ball rather than a tennis ball. And it's on a little smaller court than a tennis court, but you still have a net. We're here at the Ogden Pickleball Association tournament. This is the women's portion. These are four and five class. They're the top ranked women uh, in the area. And Ogden is fantastic for pickleball. They've got as many outdoor courts in this one park, I think, as Salt Lake County does in total. This is really one of the meccas for pickleball. It's very social and you can have fun while having competitive while well, having competitive sport. You know, I like the association with all the people. I've probably made more friends playing pickleball than probably any place else. You know, it's a simple game. If somebody comes out, if you can take 10, 15 minutes and let someone kind of explain the game to you, within a matter of 30 minutes, you're going to understand it and you're going to feel like you really start to enjoy the game automatically. It, it doesn't take too long to figure it out. Regardless of who he hits it to, has to let it bounce, and then, then, you then, can, it's, then it's, it's, game it's fair game. I started three years ago. They had a demonstration at the recreation center that I go to, and I got hooked immediately. It's an addictive sport. Boy, if, if you don't want to get dragged into something in a lifetime event, don't play pickleball because it's very <laughs> addictive. It's fun, it's easy, and you're playing with a great bunch of people. You can play with your family. It'll just be a good sport that you can play with anybody. All right, Jill and I are getting massacred, so uh, so you don't have to watch this anymore. You guys go to our travel adventure. We are all celebrating days of 47. It's coming right up. This is a time when we commemorate the trek that the Mormon pioneers made from Nauvoo, Illinois, and got to Salt Lake. They left winter's quarters, and they came out in bands, the first ones arriving July 24, 1847. But really, there is another migration that took place from its very beginnings in Palmyra, New York. And while a lot of us have done treks and followed that western migration, today we're going to show you an itinerary for following the eastern migration. Now, if you're not LDS, this is still a great trip because it's very rich in history. There's a lot of fun things to do on the way, and you're going through some of the most beautiful country in the United States. So grab a pencil and your atlas. Let's get going. We start right here at the Joseph Smith Farm in Palmyra, New York. This is a great place. One of the buildings there has been there ever since the Smith family lived there. And it's still intact, it's been kind of fixed up, and it is the Alvin Smith home. And I never really understood this history. It's kind of neat to see what homes were built like. If you like building things, this is a great trip because you get to see stuff that you just wouldn't otherwise get to see. And along the way, you just see so much great stuff. I mean, there is so much history in that part of the country and the 
rolling green hills and you come up these mountain grades, but you see these big valleys with these mile wide rivers running through them and farmlands everywhere and, and all this lush greenery. And we came across this one place where some guy just collected tractors and old army vehicles. And of course, you know me and army vehicles, I'm gonna stop and look. You go along the Susquehanna River in places where it's a mile wide and you've got airboats out there running because it's wide, but it's really shallow. And everywhere you went up the river, you saw people fishing in different kinds of waters. In Utah, it's very dry and you can find lakes and everything, but here it's a lot different because you just see water everywhere. <laughs> Next up is Fayette. To get to Fayette, you drive up along Seneca Lake. This is a place that's worth a couple of days on your trip anyway because there's so much to do around there. And the Finger Lakes are all connected by canals. So if you were a boating person, you could take a boat there and you could cover seven lakes. Next stop is Kirtland, Ohio. Kirtland is really the first big community and it's where most of the significant religious history of the church all came together. And this was the first time that the LDS people actually really set out to gather and build a community. They did this in Kirtland. They have reconstructed the old part of the town. The thing that really stood out to me is the quality of the replicas that they've built. We've got friends back home that uh, did some of the restoration through uh, Kirtland, through some of the sawmill and stuff in Kirtland. And so it's kind of fun to kind of watch and see some of the stuff that they have rebuilt and replaced in there to see how it was actually working and functioning. It is authentic, right down to the handcrafted nails that hold stuff together. Our last stop is Nauvoo. You can take tours there. They have probably the best collection of actual grave sites, history, the restored houses, the original houses. And of course, they recently rebuilt their temple. It was burned down when they were run out of that area. And of course, nearby is Carthage. And this is where their prophet, Joseph Smith, ended up losing his life, and it set the stage for the migration west that brought the pioneers to Salt Lake for the days of 47. If you're traveling with a family and you're trying to get somebody to understand the traditions that your family lives by, this is a great way to do it. And it brings a three-dimensional reality to the stories you've heard as a kid. I probably didn't allow enough time in each location. I just, there's just, there's so much to do in every place that we go. Having all that time together in the car. I mean, we're forced to talk to each other and to and, and just kind of put up with each other a little bit more. For any of you that are out there planning on doing something like this, don't hesitate. It's, it's been fun. Don't get us wrong. The nights are short, the days are long, but it, with some careful planning, you can make a wonderful trip out of this. The entire road time is about 19 hours. It'll take you three hours to get around New York and Pennsylvania, about six hours to get from there down to Kirtland, Ohio, and about nine hours to get to Nauvoo. Now that's actual driving time. So you gotta allow time for stops along the way. And each site you need at least an hour, and in many cases I would recommend two. So with all those things considered, you can do this trip in a week. I would recommend two. If you'd like a complete itinerary, go to our website, Maybe next year we'll pick the trek up from here and go the rest of the way to Salt Lake. For At Your Leisure, I'm Chad Lee. When the road takes you farther than you knew possible, when the world is more beautiful than you've ever seen, when home is more comfortable than it should be, this is when you know you're in Kane County. The perfect mix of rural and urban, culture, and adventure. Glendale, Orderville, Kanab, Big Water, small towns with more to offer than just peace and quiet. Kane County, Utah. Find the new you. There are certain types of people out there who put everything to the test. For them, we built the Can-Am Maverick XDS with the first factory installed turbo. It delivers 121 horsepower impressive suspension travel, and exclusive Fox shocks. It's engineered to ace any test, including yours. Can-Am, the ride says it all.
in a place that is beyond words. There is nothing to be said. Except, take your time in Bryce Canyon country. next vacation in your toy hauler could be twice the fun. Double your pleasure, double your fun, double your slides with the Cyclone One. Our product review for the Race City product review today is the Cyclone 3611. This is a very unique fifth wheel toy hauler. It's got some really fun configurations on it, one of which is this double slide. And if you want to see what it does to the space on the inside of a 36 foot toy hauler, follow me. You know, the designers at Heartland have been working overtime the last couple of seasons as they've come out with these new toy haulers because they're putting more and more into less and less space. Of course, we showed you the slider and we'll get into the details on that on the inside. But take a look at some of the fun little things they're doing. First, a bar style sink with a bar style controls right here in the kitchen counter. The kitchen is a complete slide out from this galley, full-size fridge. You've got your high point convection microwave combination, propane stove, range top here. So you've got a nice little corner galley, but they're doing all this mood lighting. So you've got all of these LEDs on dimmers. And so you can set this mood lighting in the evenings. You've got a big entertainment center sitting right across from your couch. Okay, here it is, the double slide. Now, you may not be able to tell it because the camera's shooting in two dimensions, it's three dimensional here. But this space is a full 12 feet wide at least. It may actually even be a little bit more by 14 to 16 feet long. So this is a really good sized room. So you can kind of kick back, you've got your fireplace entertainment center across the way, drop down in here into one of these recliners and you know pop your feet up after a good day of hard riding on your dirt bikes you turn on the vibrating chair and you watch your favorite movie and you fall asleep isn't that great all right come on there's a lot more to look at in this trailer okay come across the way i want to show you the bunk bed that is a bunk up on the top it has a secret cubby in the back and a bunk that comes across here now something new. Instead of the roll up and roll down screens that are always kind of hard to navigate, they've now put sliding doors in. When you go to take your uh, ATVs out, you just pull a pin up here and they pivot out. Then you set up a deck and you've got a deck that you can close the doors on and stay warm. They've also changed the seating. It used to be front to back. So they put stadium seating in here on either side and they convert to a bed very quickly. Up in the nose of the trailer, you'll find your master bedroom suite. Cozy, it's got hanging lockers on this side, a little vanity makeup area over here, a door to the bathroom, which has, I might add, not only a shower, but a tub. So for 36 feet, they've packed in a lot of living space. It can be yours with a simple visit to Ray City RV on Riverdale Road in Roy. If you want to share this with your friends and have a whole army or fleet of these heading out to the dunes, well, then just share the video. We'll see you next time on the Race City RV. In 1946, Ray City started a business built on exploration and family. He made his customers a promise that they would always find a friend when they walked into a dealership with the name Ray City. Now, 70 years later, that promise is fulfilled every day. We're still all about exploration and family. 70 years is a long time, but we are just getting started. Come in and celebrate our huge anniversary sale. Ray City RV off Riverdale Road in Roy, serving your family since 1946. The Utah Farm Bureau has always been there to fight for the needs of its members. With discount programs on items ranging from vehicles and ATVs to health and wellness. The membership fees aren't big, but the results are. 
We've been around since 1916, and we're not leaving anytime soon. Utah Farm Bureau. We work for those who work to feed the world. General is the most powerful rec utility side-by-side -side ever made. The industry's deepest cargo box lets you haul and dump up to 600 pounds, and the revolutionary cockpit totally refines comfort and protection. Polaris General, ultimate versatility to win every battle. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We are here at the Ogden Pickleball Association tournament and learning how to play pickleball. And so far, the games are getting better. <laughs> <laughs> we've been getting killed, actually. We have, but, our, but we've improved a little by little. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Reese. <laughs> but right now, let's find out a little bit more about this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> at Monroe Park and also at Mount Ogden Park for a few of the divisions. We have the Ogden Pickleball Association Annual Tournament 2016. We are doing men's and women's doubles today. Tomorrow we'll have mixed doubles. And we have about 228 participants this year, so it's a big event. We host one big tournament a year. We do have a few round robin mixers throughout the summer that have maybe 50 or 60 players at a time. Those are much more casual not as many prizes or community sponsors. This is our big annual fundraising event. We have uh, the Tournament of Champions coming up over Labor Day weekend. It's uh, put on by John Gullo, and it's actually a professional tournament, so people from all over different countries and all over the United States will be coming to play, and it's the top le level will be there. It's gonna be located in Brigham City, Utah. You can go on uh, pickleballtournaments.com, and that's where you sign up. Um, also, it'll give you the events and the, the dates, so if you want to come and watch, it'll, the finals are usually in the afternoon, so people can come after they're af off of work to see the gold medal matches. If you want to learn how to play pickleball in uh, Ogden, you can go to www.ogdenpickleball.org, and all the information is there. You can go to usapa.org, and they have lists of places to play. It's a growing sport. Bountiful has a big group of people that play. Logan is growing. Brigham City is growing. And it's catching on in Pleasant View and just throughout the state. It's a great family sport. Grandpas can play with grandsons. Uh, you can, people with not a lot of experience can come out there and see success right away. And so it's just very fun to be able to rally back and forth and to be able to have a good long rally, feel like you're getting a good workout, plus having a lot of fun with people. Good game, you guys. Woohoo! Nice job. <laughs> this week's Trailhead Adventure is brought to you by Rocky Mountain ATV MC.com. It's a great place to go get all your motorcycle and ATV parts and accessories. One size really doesn't fit all. One size generally fails all. Recreationists and local leaders have seen more and more regulation and closures creep into what had once been non-controversial landscapes. Trails have been shut down. Restrictions on grazing have caused families to walk away from hereditary rangelands. Lawsuits have taken their toll on agencies and their ability to manage for multiple use. Recently in Las Vegas, Nevada, a diverse group of officials and elected leaders came together from different states to discuss these issues. But instead of simply lamenting what they see as failed policies and bad decisions from Washington, the goal of this public land summit was much more productive. What we don't get a chance to do all the time is to discuss with folks from our neighboring states and to coordinate those efforts. And I think that was a unique opportunity uh, dealing with, with folks out here in Nevada that, that really are fighting the same battles that we are. 
this particular summit was interesting because it was about what we could do as elected officials, what you know we could do as citizens to be able to influence policy, to direct policy. Sometimes we hear a lot of complaints from constituents about on the ground activities and on the ground restrictions that are that are going on. One of the things that, that all of my constituents need to understand is that they have the opportunity to influence policy as well. They have the opportunity to influence their, their delegation in Congress, you know. And, and those people listen, and they listen via social media, they listen to letters and emails, and, and so if they had heard how to message these concerns and, and how to voice these concerns and, and how to influence policy, um, you know, it, it, that would be hugely beneficial. Presentations at the summit range from how to work with federal agencies and develop relationships to legal questions and concerns regarding state sovereignty. Debates over the transfer of public lands were also heard, with differing viewpoints presented so all the information could be available to each participant. Public land issues have risen to the forefront of many government hearings in places like Utah and Nevada over recent years. Both states are owned primarily by the federal government, with management decisions for millions of acres of land coming from individuals who oftentimes have never visited either state. Some organizers hope gatherings like this one could help influence and change that process, returning management to what it was originally intended when the Federal Lands Policy Management Act was initially conceived. Even though FLIPMA says that we're supposed to be utilizing it for multiple use and managing it for multiple use, uh, we really have fallen into a realm of managing it for the least amount of effort and for the least amount of controversy. And that's, that's really unfortunate because what it's done is it's really resulted in you know, an environment that's, that's managing the, the users off of the land. More public land summits are being planned by elected leaders with the intention they'll become more common throughout the West. The new ideas and strategies presented here give plenty of food for thought, and it's hoped even more proposals will come to light in the coming months and years. With so much public land in the Rocky Mountain states, and so many ideas on how they should be used or not used, it's understandable that solutions oftentimes take years to come to fruition. So long as summits like this one continue to bring people together in the spirit of collaboration and respect, the one-size-fits-all approach could make way for something that better serves communities affected most by our American public lands. So until we can educate the rest of the country on what public land really means and, and what it's like when everything is public land in your county, we're going to keep fighting this uphill battle. Hopefully, you know, this continues and we start to build. So I'm hoping that going forward, this is just the beginning of the discussion. From the trailhead, I'm Don Dunwell. Don't let your next family outing end in tragedy. Don't drink and ride. Driving an OHV under the influence of alcohol is no different than driving your car under the influence of alcohol. Law enforcement officers will be out checking riders and operators of OHVs. You could end up seeing jail time, loss of driver's license, the same stiff penalties that apply to operating a car. This message is from the Utah Division of Parks and Recreation. Ride responsibly. It's out there. Something is definitely out there. Whatever it is, it's big. At one point, I swear, we got so close I could smell it. But then, poof, it was gone. Right. It exists. The new Honda Pioneer 1000 with the best-in-class engine and six-speed fully automatic dual-clutch transmission. Pioneer 1000 from Honda. Utah, are you ready for some rodeo? July 14th, 15th, and 16th, the Ute Stampede, Juab County Fairgrounds, 8 p.m. each night. Cotton Rosser, Flying U Rodeo Company, Hall of Famer, brings the livestock, challenging the best cowboys in the world of the PRCA. Three-time Rodeo Clown of the Year, Justin Rumford, and this year we feature all the way from France, Manu Latest, Christian Gonzalez. They will do some amazing things called bull jumping. From the Flying U Rodeo, Flying Cowboys, to the Great Parade, to the City of Fun Carnival, it's all at the Ute Stampede. We'll see you in Juab County. There's a little place on a Utah map where I was raised.
That's where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high, and the stars come out at night. Oh, there ain't nothing like being raised in the basin with a youth reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. Welcome back. We have had so much fun playing pickleball and I'm getting hungry. Yeah, I'm starving because Reese and uh, Neil ran us all around that court. I bet they're not even sweaty. Yeah, they probably <laughs> didn't, even, didn't even get warmed up yet. <laughs> well, we get something to eat. Steve will show you who our contest winner is and also the events that are coming up. All right, Darren, we have a lot to talk about, so let's start with our AYL sticker winner. We dug into our pile of photos and pulled our random winner out, and it is Scott Willis. He sent us this photo a few months ago, and you can see his razor with an AYL sticker right there, along with some awesome snow tracks. Now call us this week, Scott, at 801-947-8888, because you are the winner of a vacation package to Lizzie and Charlie's in Marysville. Now, you won't need those tracks, but you can take your razor out and explore the Paiute Trail. All right, now that that's out of the way, we have some serious news to discuss. Just at the end of this last week, the Forest Service announced that they are revising the travel management plan for the Manti LaSalle National Forest, and the comment period starts immediately. Open houses will be held across the Southwest starting July 11th in Price, Utah, with five other meetings between then and the 21st just 10 days later. If you want to help shape the forest management plan, now is the time to participate. To find out more information on how to submit comments or where the individual public meetings are being held, just go to plia.org. You can also watch our Facebook page. We'll be posting more information there. Also remember the Ute Stampede Rodeo is going on July 14th through the 16th in Nephi, Utah, as well as the Outlaw ATV Jamboree in Vernal. That's being held the 27th through the 30th. For more information on both of these events, just go to AYLTV.com. Now let's see how Darren and Jill are enjoying their lunch. We are about to try a Juicy Lucy and a Philly Collins. Yeah, Philly, yeah. <laughs> New twist on a Philly cheesesteak. Philly so. Collins from the Rockin' Gourmet Grilled Cheese Feedback Food Truck. Yep. And what's really cool about these guys is that you should, when you come out to these events, come over and support these food trucks because a lot of the profits they're making here, they're actually giving to like primary children's and other, uh, other charities so that you're not only feeding yourself, you're feeding other people. That's right. While we enjoy these, take a look at next week's show. Classic cars are an inspiration to a lot of guys, but when you're Chad Booth, you take it to a whole new level. Next week on AYL, he and Rhea are at one Western car show that has a lot to offer, but the cars are only the beginning. Plus, Darren Kinder takes out the newest electric road bike and finds out how it stacks up against the competition. See you here next week. We have had such a great time at the pickleball tournament. I didn't even know there was such a thing. But thank you to Ogden Pickleball Association. And also thank you to Reese Stein and Neil City for teaching us how to play. It was yeah. so much fun. Those guys have real patience with us. So. <laughs> they do. I don't think they worked up a sweat, but we got some exercise in. Yeah, they so worked us pretty good. So that's why we had to go get lunch. That's right. So we got food, exercise. Now we're done. Now we're ready for our nap. <laughs> So just remember, get out and create your own adventure. At your leisure. Yeah. And uh, so, what? go ahead. Oh. While we do that. Let's do it again. Yeah, just it right oh, to the end. You can do that. Hi, I'm Chad Booth from At Your Leisure. I hope you just enjoyed the YouTube video that you just watched. Now, remember, we come up with new videos like this every single week. So you might want to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a single story that we have out. Now, you can also share us with all of your friends on social media. Here's how to do it right here. And that way, they can have fun too. If you want detailed information, we of course have our website, AYLTV.com. And from there, you can find out which television stations we broadcast on. So you never have to spend a day without your fix of family-oriented outdoor recreation adventure. Plus, don't forget, we have really cool contests.